And welcome to Infinite Sided Dice, where we tell stories and the dice decide our fate. It is so good to be back here in the studio. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Always back, count baby. Ron and Hyas for a woo. <laughs> <laughs> We're here with season two, the long-awaited season two of Cyberpunk Edge of Extinction. Um, I don't think we have any housekeeping other than make sure you hit that like and subscribe and do all that fun stuff. Uh, we have a Patreon. There's a link in the description. And with that, let us begin. Night City, 2048. We find ourselves in a dreary office in a privately run prison owned by Militech Corporation. Sitting in a chair across from a desk full of nondescript suit wearing corpo nerds. Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> nerds. <laughs> We uh, we see Poltergeist. Um, how have these last three years treated Poltergeist? Oh, uh, you know, pretty much the same as it's always been. She looks the same as she did before. Maybe a bit more tired. Yeah, a bit more tired. Having spent the better part of the last three years in lockup. The um, one of the gentlemen. Rifles through some papers. Uh, see here, convicted, mm, excessive violence. Denied. Denied? Uh, excuse me, uh, if I could speak on behalf, I said denied. These uh, sort of disheveled young woman uh, that was uh, your def uh, public defender of sorts looks sort of crestfallen and immediately shuts her mouth. I'm sorry, can you just explain to me what excessive violence I have caused during all of this? Yes, and if you, you check her file, there's absolutely no record of any infractions before the arresting incident. And since she's been in prison, there's been very, she's been good behavior. Sorry, this goes above uh, anything we have to say here. Um, she's a high priority, so she's going to be staying in prison for the foreseeable future. I'm sorry, I, I, I have the sneaking suspicion that you are withholding some kind of information. Excessive violence, I would love to see any kind of itemized list or record dictating what violence I have caused during all of this. I have been I, on my best behavior. Uh, ma'am, you're dismissed. Guards, uh, with that, two guards walk into the room. Um, Am I in and, cuffs? Uh, you were, yeah, you were cuffed to the chair and they release your restraints and start to move you out of the office. I'm gonna punch one of the guards. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, punch them, punch them! <laughs> you punch a guard. Starting with a boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll. Um, Roll melee. I'm gonna roll martial arts attack. Guard is on uh, aware. Oh, no. Um, plus my solo thing. There's the, the guard's evasion roll. Just for Sick. you. <laughs> that is a 31. I'm gonna go ahead and implode. <laughs> a 31, you land your punch. Um, but as you do, five more people come in and um, 
you get one more. Uh, he mm-hmm. he's immediately blood erupts. Uh, roll damage. Um. Uh. Is that sixteen? Yeah. Sixteen damage. Um, blood erupts from his nose as it just sort of explodes on his face. Um, and two more guards come out um, and start to tackle you. You have, I think, one more action here. Or... Um, sure, yeah, I, I will evade their tackle. Uh, okay. Um, you, uh, let's see, let's roll for the four of them. All right, none of them. Go ahead and roll evasion. Nice. Uh, 22. As I, okay, so they're not able to, you wriggle free um, from that, but then behind you, you suddenly feel like uh, like a punch in the kidney um, and turn to see a guy with a hypo. Uh, and you feel your eyes start to roll. Cut to the prison yard. Um, it's uh, it's the allotted 30 minutes that you had to spend in the yard with the entire uh, population of the prison. And there's one big motherfucker that you've been avoiding for the last three years. Um, you know him by the name of Saint Argyle. Uh, he's a good, pushing seven foot tall, beefy person, sort of the boss of the prison. Um, and on your effort to be in best behavior, you have a cross paths with him. But today is a different kind of day. Perhaps he senses your weakness from the, uh, your earlier meeting, um, he approaches you, um, and just stands as you're trying to walk to, um, as, he, puts himself in your path and puffs his chest out right in front of you, expecting you to walk around him as a show of dominance. Can I help you? I'm just standing. Just standing. All right. Well, good work on all of your standing. And I walk around him. He puts his hand on your shoulder. Hey, I don't like your attitude. Cool, neither does anybody else. What do you want me to do about it? Um, he uh, pushes you square to him and uh, looks like he's ready to pull his hand back to throw a fist at you. Um, I will dodge. Can let's I... let's roll initiative. Yeah, initiative. <laughs> Yeehaw. Oh, I rolled good. 17. Uh, I got a 23. Yeah, you first. So he takes a swing at you. (laughs) There's the one. (laughs) And then a nine. Hot rolling. (laughs) Because you're using my dice. (laughs) That's gonna come out to to a big seven. Um, You're welcome to evade. Yeah. Oh, implode, no. All right, that is still a nine. Still a nine. <laughs> You're on drugs. And apparently so is he. He swings again, Is he gets two attacks. Uh, oh, I don't know why I rolled the dice twice. That was a 19. Okay, do I roll evasion again? Is that how that work? Uh, yeah, you can evade every martial arts. Every time. Every melee attack. Cool. Uh, 17. 17, well, I did 19, right? So, oh my gosh. This hurts. Double sixes. Ooh. So you take uh, 17 points of damage. Oof. Rough. Um, and you feel the air get knocked out of you. Um, <laughs> yeah, as he connects with you in the chest um, and cracks one of your ribs. Um, yeah. You, uh, do you remember broken rib? Just for the record. The end of every turn, if you move more than four meters on foot, you resuffer this critical injuries bonus damage. So you are now uh, slow. Okay. 
All right. I didn't want to do this. <laughs> I'm trying to be good. And then I do a martial arts attack. And then I punch him a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> punch a bunch. In case you were wondering what excessive violence is, <laughs> I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> That's only a 21. Uh, okay, that hits. Yes, great. Cool, for 15 damage. Uh, okay. And then the second. Uh, 21, again. Also hits. 17 damage. Oh my gosh. 32 damage. And y'all aren't wearing any armor right now. Okay. Um, he looks jacked up after that, and a big look of surprise on his face. Um, uh, he's staggered, even. Um, Can we be done now? Is this enough? Is this what you wanted? Um, and he just says, it's done when I say it's done, you bitch. And then he throws another punch at All you. Right. I didn't think he was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought he was gonna back down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, he staggered for a second, but he sees um, as, as he's like catching his breath, he looks around the yard and sees that everybody now is watching um, and realizes that his position of power at this point is um, in jeopardy. So he stands back up to his full height and perhaps he's emboldened by the fact that you clearly have a crack. He did land one good hit on you. Um, and he comes at you one more time, uh, charging across the, the yard. Um, this is gonna be a 21 this time. And I am evading. Yeah. For 18. Okay, Bummer. so he hits you. Uh, this time is just six damage. Cool. And then uh, hits you again for a 22 this time. Okay. Um. Also 22. Um, I think oh. you win, though. Uh, Isn't it usually? No, you set the DV, and then I have to beat the DV. I think that's how that works. Okay. Uh, I'm actually not sure. Whether, we'll, we'll double check that one. Um, but we've been playing that it goes to the defender okay. in, the past, in the last season. Um, OK, you dodge his two wild swings. He's throwing haymaker after haymaker. Um, and you duck out of the way. He doesn't look like he's going to stop. <sighs> I didn't want to do this. Great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch him again. Cool. That implodes. So not so good with a, um, okay. um, with a 14 to hit. He's able to evade that one. Okay. And then the second for uh, 23. 23. Uh, he does not evade that. Fifteen damage. Wow. Molte bene. So. I'm just saying, man. I can beat your ass no, all day, you, but you're you, gonna look like an idiot. You can say that if you want, but this second, this last shot catches him right on the button on the jaw, and you see his head just turn like at a more than it should, maybe. Um, and it's a look you've seen on someone's face when they uh, their eyes just kind of go in two different directions. <laughs> and um, he starts to collapse and the crowd goes crazy. And then you feel uh, a familiar, like somebody hit you real hard in the kidney again. <laughs> thump, thump. Mm. Ah. Um, you, yeah, and uh, you turn to see, and there's of course uh, the guard stationed um, on, the, on the top corner of the prison yard with his trank gun. Um, I guess you <laughs> roll see you're addicted to tranquilizers at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you fall unconscious. Interior, cut to a different scene. Dreamland. It's a raucous crowd. On stage, none other than Ricky Wars. <laughs> with the with, uh, backed up, I assume by still designer Bleak. Any, new, any new members? You know, all the mm -hmm. same, uh, the same crew. Yeah. It's a good night. 
Um, it's a good night in that there's a lot of people there. Uh, it's a good night in that the crowd is rowdy and into it. Um, what do we? What? What's in the last three years? How that? How has Ricky uh, evolved or changed? We got some new new gear or new haircut. Definitely some new <laughs> gear. He hasn't. He's, he hasn't taken his foot off the gas musically, and to, to the point where uh, the calling is now mostly an encore piece. <laughs> But people, but people will want to hear it. That's uh, why he still has to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ab yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, he's still. Uh, he has he has two guitars now. He still rocks the old school uh, the Strat, but now he's got this like cuckoo laser thing he pulls out <laughs> for uh, some of his newer songs, um, and uh, and just a crazy, crazy boom amp. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah. Just it is loud. Um, whenever you pull out the laser guitar, it is a little bit of um, Jackson's like, do you, you really have to play that thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unbeknownst to, to, to Jackson, too, I've gotten some dampeners, uh -huh. so, <laughs> so I, can, I can play it as loud as I want. This isn't going up. <laughs> it's, it's so gauche. <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh. Uh, I went to Berkeley College of Music. That's right, that's right. I learned how to play the right way. Um, yeah, it's a rowdy night, and as you finish up uh, the, the calling, um, you step off stage, uh, make, a, make a perception check. All right. I'll just see what you uh, get your lay of the room. All right. Oh! oh. <laughs> Apparently... Hot it doesn't house. affect my ears, but it affects my <laughs> eyeballs. You're not supposed to stare directly <laughs> into the laser, right? Implodes. <laughs> implodes by 10. ten. Classic Lex first roll of the, of the season. Yeah, <laughs> something <laughs> uncrucial, right? Like, but uh, I see nothing. This is resist torture drugs all over again. What is it? I forget. How does the math work again? You're so just it implodes. Just so in the music, man. Minus ten. <laughs> Did I roll that again? Uh, no, I think I. Uh, that's it. We're done, I think, right? I think you're done. Yeah. Okay, think, so it's it's one. Uh, rules is written. You don't continue to implode. But um, <laughs> yes, you guys missed me, didn't you? You are super. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, you've got like sweat in your eyes or something because yeah. you've just been rocking too hard. Uh, here's what happens though. Uh, on that perception check, you get clobbered from behind. You just feel like somebody's body, like it not in a not in a violent way, like a mosh pit way almost. Yeah. Um, there's just this little uh, uh, kind of a scrawny guy. He, he hits you in the back uh, almost um actually make uh, make athletics. Let's see if this knocks you on your ass. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another opportunity to <laughs> implode. <laughs> Come on. Ah. Oh, there we go. Now we will explode. Oh, okay. Now we will explode. So it's so it's 21 plus 3, 24. Okay, so um, it does. It still collides with you. Like uh, that doesn't change. But you're able to sort of sidestep and um, uh, as you because it's such a deft athletics, you catch that this is just some sort of scrawny kid. You even make out that he's got um, a. Uh, uh, he's got a bomb like cyclone shirt on, uh, uh -huh. and you recognize him. He's been around. He's a fan. Um, you catch him because he was—he looks like he was about to go splayed across the ground. Yeah, um, and uh, keep him on his feet. And you notice he's got kind of a black eye, and turn and um, uh, you see there's another guy that's a little too big to be picking on someone this size. This kid's maybe like 14, 15 years old. Yeah. Um, and you see like a full grown ass, uh, you know, um, leather wearing dude with like a tight buzz cut and um, who looks like he's been drinking a lot. Okay. Yeah. You all right, kid? <laughs> yeah, whoa, Ricky, thanks. What happened to your eye? Uh, he's, that guy's an asshole. Uh-huh, picked up on that. All right, will you go over there? <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, he does what you say. <laughs> okay. so go get yourself a drink. Tell him Ricky said it's mm -hmm. on him. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, big guy standing there? Yeah, he's there. He's kind of, he's laugh. He's now he's sort of like elbowing his friend and laughing and uh, just kind of real proud of himself. Uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. Anything else? Yeah, no, I go over and I say, I go. And I, it was, and he was watching the show, yeah? Yeah. Oh, great, great. So I just tap him on the shoulder. Oh, hey, Ricky, what's up? I was just wondering if you wanted an autograph. Uh, what? Um, I guess so. Okay, and I punch him in the face. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Your chair, man. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and roll an attack. No evasion here. I think this surprises the shit out of him. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh wait, that's is that melee or just uh I forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brawling. yeah it's brawling. It's brawling. Brawling. It's brawling. Brawling. Brawl on. Woo! Brawl on, that was good. Okay, twenty three. Definitely you hit the crap out of him. Mm-hmm. Um uh yeah, roll get roll your damage two d six. That's right. Yeah, it's two d six, right? For yeah, brawling. I think just brawling. Yeah. So that's four. Oh no no no! Sorry, one of those was a d ten. Yeah. <laughs> so that's seven. Uh yeah. So as you uh you deck him in the face, uh right at the moment your fist connects with his jaw, um, the next band starts playing and mm-hmm. it's just uh. Just an old school like uh um let's do what we need a band name. Somebody give me a band name. Uh uh <laughs> just, just, oh wait 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 wait. <laughs> Last the, pants, I don't the know. Rebellion. Right? <laughs> the rebellion. The rebellion. Oh, there you go. The Rebellion, and their thing is they just are all dressed in black, but they have different colored mohawks, each one of them. <laughs> nice. And um, they all have their guitars, like, uh, no laser guitars, but um, they're swung, like, way down, like, at their knee, and they all just play, like, there's three of them, but they all play the same exact riff, you know, and it's yeah. just that that kind of band. And they just kick in really loud, and the, at that point, the mosh pit just, like, kind of explodes and um, starts, like, swallowing you all up. Mm. Um you can continue to beat this guy's ass if you want. But. I don't. I just kind of, I just, I just kind of definitely disappear into the mosh pit. Nice. <laughs> you, like, you like Homer Simpson out of it, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Homer Simpson yeah. into a mosh pit. <laughs> <laughs> but you're just like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you, <laughs> just, a, just a little reminder to pick on someone your own size. That's all. Yeah, he'll remember that. He yeah. definitely got. I think you. You like maybe you have a ring that says Ricky on it. It's like <laughs> back, That's it's written you backward. Your signature. Yeah, there you go. That's my autograph. Written backward on the ring, so it like imprinted on his forehead. He's a fan of us. We get the tattooed over it later. <laughs> it's backwards. Yeah. Um, as you move toward the bar, you see uh, your old friend Faze uh, slinging drinks back there. Um, make a, uh, uh, actually, let's do contested here. Conceal, reveal, object. Do you have that uh, stat? I do, but not, I didn't put anything in it. So let's see what my standard, it is just a plus six. Here we go. All right, still doable here. Oh, exploding. Oh. Excellent. 16 plus 3, 19. So um, you see Faze slinging drinks, and um, there's a uh, um, sort of preppy looking dude. And you notice as Faze uh, hands him over a drink, he also like does a real quick move where he slides his hand across the table, and then like uh, they almost like high five. But with that roll, you notice like a, just a little baggie of something. Okay, that phase um, passes. Okay. Yeah. And cool. as you walk up, phase is like, "Oh, hey, Ricky. Uh, wait, what was phase's voice? Is that right? That feels right." Sure. I don't yeah. Ricky, it. it's me, Faze. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he's like hey. drugs, right? Maybe he sounds different. No, time. I'm clean and sober, man. I'm running. I just sling drinks and uh, nothing else. Uh, boss wanted to see you. All right, B- bosses. Uh, yeah, boss. Uh, boss wanted to see you. Oh yeah, <laughs> what'd she say? Uh, just, just nothing. I don't know. She wanted. Uh, she just wanted you upstairs in her office. Um, okay. I think I saw a guy come in. Maybe for some kind of a meeting. Okay, sounds good. I'll, yeah. I'll hop up there and uh, just give him a look. Like, yeah, you keep slinging them drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to figure out what if Faze would pick up on on what you're laying down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, he definitely. Maybe. 
What is that? Is that like uh, I mean, this is not human perception, maybe, maybe for him. <laughs> intimidation for me? No. Uh, no, 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 not no, at all. Unless you so. want it. If you no. want to be intimidating, you can. No, no, no. It's more like, it's, it's yeah. You need a bully it's face. Like I saw, you know. A bully yeah. face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're doing. I mean, yeah, and, and honestly, I think... It is what it is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you think about the economics of Dreamland and, like, uh, how this place even runs and how you pay rent or how... Yeah. Um, like phase and the piranhas offer a certain level of mayhem but also security yeah um it keeps other other gangs out um in the last three years uh this is worth talking about like the santiago's have uh more or less locked down the block in terms of they're they're interested in sort of keeping it safe for your average um uh, street level person right. like uh, it's it's actually I think it's improved under under them as opposed to Ajax and the Piranhas did a certain level of enforcement on the street but they weren't interested in making sure that like uh, uh, you know Alma could make sure she sells her kibble to everybody on, you know right without you know, people can get to the bodega without having to worry about getting jacked in the street yeah um Oh, then so, the, and then the payoff, the offset is is that they you know they do a little side business in here. Yeah, and then yeah. and so that I probably don't. For sure, uh, piranha is gonna piranha. Yeah, is piranha a verb? Now <coughs> it is. Now. It now. is yeah. now. Piranha is gonna piranha. <laughs> uh, okay, you um, then you head on upstairs. Yeah, I do. Um, as you walk past uh, the what used to be sort of the VIP section has become a bit of a waiting room now. Yeah. Um, and you see, oh, this is a good. I'm gonna give you one more roll here. Um, a good human perception. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, roll. Just want to see. That's a. That's something I'm decent at. Okay. Uh, sixteen. Yeah. The sixteen. Um, you're like kind of walking. There's a the door to that leads back toward where the offices are, um, and as you're moving across the room, like it's almost like the hair sticks up on the back of your neck just a little bit, and you're like you realize you notice somebody sitting there, um, and sitting almost perfectly still is a uh, a man um, in the in the waiting area sitting really over uh, really well dressed. Um, not ostentatious in any way, just a clean, um, dark gray suit. Anything familiar about him? Uh, nothing familiar, but he gives you the, he gives you the heebie-jeebies, uh, almost because he's sitting so perfectly still. Yeah. Um, okay, cut two. Okay, great. Um, we see a, uh, a makeshift, uh, gurney with an enormous man laying on it. Um, clearly uh, face bloodied um, and uh, uh, been in a fight and crow uh, standing over him, um, presumably tending to the wounds of said enormous man uh, with, with a black and blue hamburger face uh, is, uh, is Lauren. Um, who do we see? Um, he's grizzled, wrinkled, a little older. Um, his his it's like his face is permanently sunburned, and if he doesn't have skin cancer now, he will. <laughs> kind of skin. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's very Logan uh, from. Yeah. From Logan. Totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Logan. Very Wolverine Logan. from yeah. Logan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's a, a Hugh Jackman. Yeah. You know, Logan, not Les Mis. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, a, a massive five o'clock shadow, just, you know. Uh, but in his eyes, he just looks beaten. Mm -hmm. He just looks torn down from the world. Sure. Uh, very sad eyes. Um, yeah. And with his. Which he uh, usually hides, he's constantly wearing sunglasses. Yeah. Um, so you're in your estimation, a little speed heel is going to keep this guy on his feet. Uh, yeah. 
maybe a dip in the cryo chamber to help his face get right. Uh, is the fight over? Uh, fight seems to be over, yeah. Okay. This is post-fight. He's laying there. Um, two other people in the room. Um, a sort of uh, larger... Um, uh, 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 like uh, with with a um, a larger woman with sort of like a almond colored skin um, broad shouldered uh, but with um, tight curly hair but it's cut real short Um, and she's got a cigar in her mouth kind of sticking out the side Um, you know her to be uh, Rhonda Lee who's the proprietress of the um uh, the place where you work, uh, Knockouts. Uh, it's a, a pit fighting slash gambling uh, <clears throat> slash uh, bar establishment. Um, the slogan is, we got two kinds of knockouts. Um, and they're <laughs> referring, like, crassly to the wait staff and the <laughs> fights that happen. And the other man, um, you see a, a scrawny, um, sort of greasy-haired, a uh, rat-like face. Um, uh, perhaps he would be better named Rat, but his name is Roach. And he's um, he's there uh, having a conversation with Rhonda as you work. Um, and Ron, uh, Rhonda looks up for that conversation to you and says, I, "Can can Roach get the data off a uh, off a tiny?" Uh, and I pull out an unlit cigarette and offer it to her to light it with her cigar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, she doesn't do that, but she does uh, pull out a Zippo. I light uh, it and put it in the side of my mouth. I'm like, I'll get him going. Uh, and Brooch is like, ah, nobody's interested in seeing Tiny get his ass kicked again. Are we going to get some new blood around here or what? Rhonda, we'll, we'll get a good fighter when there's a good fighter to get. Um... What do you think? Tiny be ready to fight next week? Uh, he could fight tomorrow if he really wanted to, but he'd get his ass kicked all over again. Uh, we're trying to set up a card with Jack Hammer. Well, we'll figure it out. Um, I mean, he's gonna, I'm going to put him in the cryo chamber and it'll speed things up, but he doesn't look too good. This is probably one of the worst fights he's been in. Well, this is his third one this week. Uh, (laughs) I'd say at least give him two days. Two days. How about you? You know any jackasses that might want to get in the ring? Uh, This... No. I I don't like people. You know that. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. As long as you keep stitching them up, you'll have work here. We don't just want any jackass to get in the ring. We need a we need a star. <clears throat> Guys will pay big money. I heard rumors. I don't know. Ah, oh, we'll have to figure it out. So, um, probably no roll if you want to do uh, speed heal. Um, you want to make? Uh, I think I'll just. I mean, he's is he already stabilized? I mean, I can roll for that. Uh, yeah, actually, no. That's that's fair enough. He is. Uh, Let's see, let's roll some critical injuries on this dude since he's uh, laying on the gurney here. Um, let's see, after a fight like this, we're gonna give him two criticals. For, well, on examination, you see that he has a collapsed lung okay. and uh, and a spinal injury. Good crap. <laughs> uh, that's one of the bad ones. <laughs> I don't know about that. So those are stabilization. Uh, Collapsed lungs going to be paramedic 15 just to keep him breathing. Okay. Um, uh, that's an 18. An 18? Okay, yeah, you're able to sort of... Um, what's the... Uh, I don't know. I imagine there's a cyberpunk version of, like... he's not. He doesn't need a tracheotomy. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you add some compression and you have some of your tools and... and uh, pack it up, and um, he's going to need a little bit of extra time to sort of get it repaired. Um, in fact, with the spinal injury and the collapsed lung, you think he won't be ready to fight next week. That's your estimation. He can be ready next week. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't um, like people. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> so, so Roach uh, comes up and pulls a device out of his pocket that sort of flips open, and um, he plugs it into the back of the now unconscious Tiny, um, the back of his neck, and uh, you see a little like uh, buffering data bar filling up. Um, takes a few seconds, and he pops it out. He goes, "Well, I'll see what I can do." Um, you know, the brain dances can be very lucrative, but I'm telling you, nobody gives a shit about seeing one big dude beat up some other big dude. All right, see you later. And Roach leaves. Rhonda looks exasperated. Um, cut to back in the prison yard. Prisoner. Four, two, alpha, six, oh, one. <laughs> That's your number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing. I'm Hugh Jackman like in my minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see what Hugh Jackman I am. <laughs> Prestige. <laughs> the Prestige. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. You just have to kill yourself every day. Um, <laughs> Right. Sorry, spoilers. <laughs> uh, 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 the the cell door opens. You are being discharged. Um, yeah. Yeah. And a guard starts walking you down the down the uh, cell block. All right. Is this uh, some kind of trick? Mm, I say mm, to the guard. No trick. Uh, you get to discharge and you see um, a prison uh, administrator, uh, not necessarily guard, but uh, that you recognize. Um, she has a little badge. Uh, Manji is her name, M-A-N-J-I. And uh, she's got some of your stuff in a bag. Um, and the guard brings you in and Manji says, that's good, I got it from here. And the guard kind of looks... Are you sure? Like, and you see uh, one of the other guards peeking in the door who's got like a plaster on his nose. <laughs> uh, and she's like, yeah, I got it. And so he leaves and shuts the door. She says, Listen, we're giving you the old Night City transfer. You want to get out of this place, right? Uh, yeah. It's been arranged. But you're gonna have to go here. And she hands you a card. Um, you flip the card over, it reads, Knockouts. Do I know about knockouts? Mm, make a streetwise check. That makes sense to me. <laughs> if I can find it, that's, what's status streetwise? Is that mm. cool or is that smart? Uh, Streamwise. I think it's. How fast can I scroll? It's cool. All right. Sweet. Eleven. Eleven. Um. Actually, no. I think just Poltergeist and and who? Sh well, no, that's not true. You would know what Knockouts is. You, you're familiar with the establishment. Um. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be working there for a while. Really? <laughs> and I don't mean tendon bar. Well, I guess that's something. I guess anything to get out of here. Yeah, look for uh, Rhonda Lee. Tell her uh, Manji sent you. And if you don't, worse than Militech. We'll, we can revoke all this paperwork and Militech will bring the full force all of right, their- All right, all right. You don't need just to so you threaten understand. me. I understand. No, it's not a threat. Okay. It's just an explanation of the circumstances. Thank you for your explanation. I will be going to knockouts. <laughs> right, I, I think she also doesn't like people. <laughs> I also don't like people. <laughs> the nice character, she's gone. We're gonna hate each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. You're standing in the waiting room of at Dreamland, waiting to go in to see the boss. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, sitting in the waiting room as you walk past is this still well-suited figure. Um, You open the door to see uh, a middle-aged woman, maybe slightly older than middle-aged, dressed in expensive clothes that look, that are um, about four seasons old. Uh, And she's got um, a cloth and a spray bottle and she's trying to wipe down uh, a large uh, fake wood desk. And sitting behind that desk is Shitwrecked. (laughs) And uh, when uh, when I walk in and I see, is, is, do, do I recognize a woman? Uh, the yeah, thing? you'd is know. That, this is Taffy. This yeah, is, that's uh, what I thought. This yeah. is Shitwreck's mom. And I go, Mom! <laughs> oh, sweetie. <laughs> oh, how you doing? It's good to see you. Um, I, you know, I've been better. Um, but, oh, no, this, I love, I, you know, this is, I'm just finding a way to be useful. <clears throat> well, I, you see there's just streaks all over the desk. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> This is great. She, I can tell she loves it. Right, boss? I punch Ricky in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just take it. I'll just Everybody's take it. punching people. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what do we see? What, uh, what does Shitwrecked uh, look like? How have these three years traded you? Yeah, so, you know, she's always been poised and put together, but there's a little more of like a... Uh, business air about her running things um you know if if there is you know kind of like a, almost like a power suit type thing but still rocking all black still want to go stealth mode there's still undercover that needs to happen so just the hiding in plain sight thing is still there but she definitely has an air of like just being in charge okay um yeah uh taffy or your mom kind of mm. looks to you and is there like, is there anything else I can help you with? No, no, mom, you did a great job. Oh, thank God, I am exhausted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Take a break. I'm gonna go see if, uh, what's it, Faze, mm-hmm. and see if he can make me a nice drink. Oh, okay, be careful though. Make sure it's just a drink. Oh, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and she um, moseys out. Bye, um, mom. So uh, the reason you've called uh, Ricky up to your office is um, unannounced. This guy in the waiting room um, has showed up requesting to speak with you. Um, And before, as your mom opens the door, he's actually standing there. Um, uh, but he's he doesn't come in. Um, he's just he's still just waiting. He's like you see him standing a few feet back from the door, like still just patiently waiting. Um, and uh, mom sort of walks past him and he says, "Mrs. Perea." And then she's like, "How, how do you do?" And just like. Very, she's very practiced in sort of social stuff. Uh, so she just sort of like, of course, this guy knows my name, <laughs> and um, and moves along uh, toward the uh, toward the stairs to go downstairs to find Faze. Um, yeah, who else would be in the office at this time? Um, <clears throat> well, I was thinking that would. <laughs> Would Blades be, have been in the office? Um, she could be there, yeah, Because I would have, I would have sent her to follow my mom, make sure she didn't get into trouble. Uh, okay, yeah, Blades. And then no one looked like. Mm. Uh, yeah, Blades is sitting on the couch looking at her agent, um, <laughs> and you say to her, Blades, taffy duty. <sighs> okay, and she <laughs> gets up See? and doesn't roll walks out of the room. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you see uh, a now, um, but uh, I guess she would be 20 years old. Yeah. 20 uh, year old with a, her hair's a little more of a mohawk now. She's lost the hoodie with the ears. Yeah. And doesn't wear skates all the time. Yeah. Um, but as she sees you, she's like, 
<clears throat> it's not breaky. Right. <laughs> you, you rock blades. Thanks for the taffy duty. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> and then she walks out of the room. <laughs> Uh, okay. I, I plop into one of the seats, you know, in front of the desk. Uh, uh, okay. You know, she's on the other side of the desk. Put my feet up. Be like, oh, that wasn't going to pass the white glove test anyway. So <laughs> put my feet up on the desk. <laughs> onto the streaked. Like, Probably more streaked now than it was uh, yeah. an, <laughs> hour, an hour earlier. Very dirty rag. Swiping <laughs> 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 more dirt on it. Uh, but uh, the door closes behind blades. Um, but you guys are left alone in the office then for for a few minutes, for the time being. So she's like, so what's the story, boss? What's with the uh, mortician out there? I don't know. That's why I called you up. He just showed up wanting to talk, and it uh, doesn't feel quite right. Did he? <laughs> no mention who he was. Um... He he introduced. Uh, he left a name, Gene, and that's it. Gene is all I got. All right. Well, yeah. I'm here. I got yeah, you just back. Just want a second pair of eyes and ears on this one. You got it. Um. Okay. Uh, you allow Gene to come in, or what's that? Uh, how do you prepare? I I don't know. Is I don't there, want to tell you what be, you do. Would there be like like a. M- a muscle, like someone that's just muscle in the room, like not uh, you can. Bodyguard you could have that if you want. I don't know if you. Do you feel like uh, I can ask you this? Do you feel like Shitwreck would always have somebody like that with her, or is that you could definitely? They're a phone call away, abs- an agent call away, sure, absolutely. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but yeah, I mean. As far I mean, as muscle there's goes, at the bar, right? yeah, there's yeah, security. Yeah, there's security there's, here. There's the odd piranha okay. they, that kind That's of, good. they sort of function. Um, probably the person who actually keeps the keeps people in line the most would be Ricky. Okay. Um, just based on his capabilities and notoriety. Would there be like a cool function where like push a button on my desk and the door opens? Sure. Yeah. Great, I'll do that. Yeah. Wait, wait, Whatever you want. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. I go, wait, let's do this. Let's yes, do this. yes, Sorry, please, uh, wanna, get, no. get ready. Right. Right. Get, look at just me. be like, just don't even bat an eyelash. Just stay right still. You want me to open the door? You want to push the, do the button I'm thing? I'm going to push the button. Do the button thing. And I, I'm always still. What are <laughs> you button. talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, you're right. My turn. Don't fidget. And I got real still. <laughs> <laughs> like, so feet up or down now? <laughs> Oh, would you want my feet up or down? I don't care. My feet are up. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky's like, everything is a performance. You think you're the greatest showman, Hugh Jackman. <laughs> no, this is true. This is right. That's, that. <laughs> That's the episode title. Oh, oh, man. Talking. I wish I could give you an inspiration. Hugh Jackman's in a trench coat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We need fan art of every yeah, character do. as a Hugh Jackman. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Are you, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Jesus. You guys have zero chill. I've got chill. One guy in a suit. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> the door opens. <laughs> is it like? <laughs> is it real smooth? Or <laughs> did you did you have Faze install this? <laughs> no, no. It's it's smooth. It's smooth. I'm just, it's a power move. It's a power move. It's I wouldn't do move. it if it was like. You didn't like assemble it with an Allen wrench. <laughs> I'm actually just like I've got pedals under the desk, and I'm. Yeah. It's like, no. it's, like a, it's a car window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it's, it, it opens smoothly and yeah, yeah, intimidatingly. The, yeah, the door swings open, and uh, Gene is still standing a, a little ways back from the door, but he kind of makes eye contact with you. Gene, come on in. Um, he steps into the room. It's a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance, uh, Miss Perea. And I'm looking forward to getting acquainted with who you are. May I sit? Is there another chair? Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> sure. He just sits on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, and he- as he sits, I stand. Okay. And, and lean against, and walk around the front of the desk and lean against it. Oh, okay. Good to know. Um, yeah, you take that position. Uh, he's unperturbed. Um, 
Miss Perea, you're a difficult person to find. Good. I'm sure that's by design. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ricardo Juarez. Interesting that you two should be together. Why? Oh, uh, Mr. Juarez has been peeking up on our radar more and more recently. I'm a representative of a firm that we won't be naming here in this meeting. But let's just say we have an interest in you, but mostly we have an interest in your father. Get in line. Yes, I can understand that sentiment. It must be difficult having him in prison these three years. Not for me. Excellent. Well, the interests I represent require some information that your father is in possession of. Now we would, of course, happily obtain this information ourselves if we weren't so at odds with the Militech-operated prison in which he is held. What we are going to do instead is um, simply, you're familiar with the term leverage? Yeah. Make a business roll. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to apply some leverage onto somebody like yourself that may be capable of reaching your father, possibly getting him out of said prison so that we can have a just a little face-to-face -face chat. You see, Akari was important to us. Some of the research they were doing was important to us. And when the poorly managed business, the overreaching CEO of Akari managed to get the entirety of that business, let's just say what it is, it went belly up. We lost some very valuable information. Now, your father worked in a department that is particularly of interest to us. And we've been able to track down much of what was lost. But uh, unfortunately, we need a face-to-face -face conversation with him. Do you think that this is something you could achieve? Whether or not I can achieve it isn't really the discussion. It's whether or not I want to achieve it. And I don't know why I would want to help anyone who has any interest in my father without knowing any information about who they are, who they work for, and what they're trying to do with said information. I understand your position. My name is Jean. Like I said, I represent a firm <clears throat> that will not be named in this meeting. We have an interest in your father. We are aware of you. We are aware of Mrs. Taffy Perea. We are aware of your entire organization, the publishing, all of it. While we are not able to intercede where Militech is concerned, we would have no trouble interceding with you, your family, and your friends. <laughs> Ricky! Rick, it sounds like Gene's threatening us. I think it does sound a little bit like a threat. Wow. Yeah, I was kind of being cool here, but here's the thing. I, I'm, you know, your awareness, get in line. Lots of people are aware of us. I don't know if you've met me before. I don't really hide, right? Mm -hmm. So what exactly are you threatening us with? Because let's be clear, that's what's happening, right? This is what's going on. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. sure, sounds like it. I, <clears throat> I don't even know why we're being threatened. I haven't denied anything. I merely asked for more information and was only presented with what was already said. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not gonna go around helping you if you're trying to like rebuild Kari. Like, see, I don't really like Corpos. I don't really like my dad. I don't really like my mom, but I do love her. And so that's a whole separate story. And I don't understand what side you're coming from. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to me and Ricardo over here. And then the other question, why don't you just go to the prison and get a visitor's pass? Well, apparently mm -hmm. they have a fight with Militech. Oh, got it. And you would know you haven't been able to visit your dad. There isn't really. Your mom hasn't been able to, and she would want to. Got it. Um, he is... Uh, he is a... Um, Militech kind of knows. They kind of know what they have uh, in that Akari was directly due to the events of... of uh, um, of season one with Red Ghost, etc. Um, it's well known that Akari was connected to Arasaka, but they don't. Maybe, maybe they don't know what exactly what they have in your father. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so here's the thing. I might be absolutely over the moon to help you, but I'm not gonna just do it because you say you want it or else. I need to know what we're getting all of ourselves into. That in your opening salvo is a little... I mean, is this the first time you've been threatened since, uh, you know, the whole thing? It's not the first time I haven't threatened. For, for, oh, I mean, oh, I, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm kind no. of... No, I mean, I'm threatened five times a day. I mean, it's just a thing here. So, what else you got? You're a very entertaining man, Ricardo Juarez. It's kind of his job. Only when I want to be. So far, these rebellions, these chants, these epithets, these inspirational dalliances, they have made some small waves. They are almost big enough for us to recognize from, let's just say, the other side of the Pacific. Now, so far, our damage from this has been more or less minimal. What we could do is let you continue to do, live your life, play your songs, it's quite an enjoyable establishment you have run here. And you allow us to strike a blow against Militech. This seems to be within your wheelhouse. Your songs are anti-corporation. Um, corporations exist. We all live under their shadow. I live under it as much as you do. But all I'm here to say is that we are motivated to reunite your father with your mother. We are motivated to have a conversation with him, retrieve the lost data. It's very valuable to us. And in return, we ignore the waves that you are making even when they reach all the way across the Pacific. I'm flattered. But I don't inspire something that's already there. That's not already there. Whatever discontent there is, whatever feelings these people have, you guys are creating those, not me. I sing about it. Maybe it inspires them and makes them feel like they're not alone. But if there's not me, there'll always be somebody else. Because, like I said, I didn't start this. I'm not the one who is, who thinks people who are below a certain economic level aren't worth more than just the dirt at the bottom of your, underneath your boot. Right? 
So, that being said, yeah, I don't mind striking a blow against another Corpo. That's fine. But, I'm not interested in making one Corpo stronger versus another one sort of thing. This thing that you're talking about, again, the crypticness of it, to some degree, just lacks a little bit of respect. It's tiresome. Like I said, like Ricky said, we're all down to take down corporations, but it's very unclear on whether you are a corporation or whether you're also oppressed underneath one because you've kind of said both in your spiel and uh, not inspiring much confidence in helping you out. Is it the economics? Um, I don't know. Is it money that you want? I mean, we'll always take money, but it's just like, are we going to help you and make the world more shit? Or are we going to help you and make the world a little less shit? Let's put it this way. Militech is in possession of something that doesn't belong to them. Perhaps your righteous inclinations could inspire you to retrieve this from Militech, in this Militech prison. Because they're planning to do something with it. I assure you, if they obtain this information that is contained within Mr. Perea's head, it won't, it won't be good. It won't be good for you. It won't be good for you. Why don't you just put a hit out on him? Because they want the information. But if they also don't want Militech having it. Yes, a smile comes across his face that doesn't reach his eyes. <clears throat> All right. Ricardo, you're a clever man. Militech gets it. They do something bad with it. You get it. What are you going to do? Build community gardens and shit? <laughs> I've always wanted to taste a tomato. Mm -hmm, me too. Grown on a nice rooftop. In Unfortunately, that falls under the purview of a different firm. But I assure you that whatever my interests will not reach these shores anytime soon. What's good for Night City is good for you. And what's good for you is helping me. It's good uh, for your mother. It's good for your aunt. It's good for Faze. It's good for Blades. And how good is it monetarily? <laughs> so cross. Sorry, I forgot to put my cryptic chip in today. <laughs> How much does it cost to operate this bar? I will offer you enough. Five digits? 25,000 eddies. You see him like doing math as he comes up with this number, just sort of like his eyes dart around the room and he's almost like adding up the value of the entire establishment, judging by your clothes, judging by the staff, and arrives at a number that he thinks will be really large. I guess that scratches the surface. We could look into it for you. See, I can be the carrot and the stick. <laughs> I think you're also a calculator. I think we need to talk. I know, I know. You've threatened us and blah, blah, blah. You're, not, you're, you're trying not to give us a choice, but we're still gonna chat. Um, 
How can we reach you? Again, a uh, a smile that doesn't reach his eyes. Um, he's now ignoring you, Ricky, and just talking to you. Um, and he presents. Uh, he goes into his jacket, which maybe isn't makes you nervous for a second, but uh, very quickly presents a business card, which he holds out. Um, and it it has. Uh, no contact information on it, but it says um, it it is just written down uh, a time and a date. And he says, I will be returning at this time. Have your discussion. And uh, with that, if you will excuse me, he stands up. He does that weird stand where he stands almost without pushing himself up. He just kind of like whoosh, is standing. <laughs> It's like, that's so okay. <laughs> and then he heel turns and uh, walks out the door. Was that a robot? I think it was a, he was definitely very goose steppy, I'll tell you that much. <sighs> All right. weird. I, uh, no, I know that we're in a big venue, but I, I can, I, I, I can, can I hear that he's pretty much gone? Uh, you couldn't hear this guy move if you tried. Yeah, and then there's that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but you could peek out the door, and he's not in the he's not in within visual range. Okay. And I, and I go. All right, boss. I'm re, I want to be honest with you. Uh, if he came over the Pacific, if he came over, if he came from uh, across the ocean. It's not small potatoes. It, I don't mind being tough with the guy, but we need to know more. Well, we're not gonna get any more out of him. That guy was like a calculator brought to life. I, uh, there was no personality. It was like he could not compute the questions and could only tell us our <clears throat> his directive. Like, you got, what do you think? You think you got it? Anyone who could put their ear to the ground that might dig something up on where the hell this guy came from? Do you have any idea what your dad has in his head? I don't have any idea what my dad has in his head. What could be so... You hear banging on the door, uh, and Faze from behind the door. Uh, boss! And, uh, he doesn't wait. He opens the door, um, and your mom is there, but she's kind of hanging on blades. And FaZe is like, really sorry. I thought she could party. Come I, on, man. No, FaZe, was, I, you FaZe. know what? I think she got the wrong, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. Sure, okay. It wasn't his fault, honey. Oh, okay, thank, okay, mom. Go sit, go sit down. Hey, what, what was with the guy with a stick up his ass? I don't know. He was very unforthcoming about anything except threats, so. We're gonna try and we're gonna rough him up. No, no, not yet. We're gonna try and figure out who sent him. Who sent him? Yeah. Okay. Um, and he can get you. No, no. phase. <laughs> <laughs> you know I can get it. I want to walk know. out of here. We do today. know. I'm gonna need you to to go back. I'm the man with the connections. I need you to walk down the stairs. Is there anything I can do for you? Walk down the I, stairs. I will. I will run to you. And you too, Mrs. <laughs> Perea. It's always great to, to chat. Um, Did you leave the party favors on the table again? Is that what happened? Look, I don't. I don't want to okay. know. I she don't want to hear it. Just go, Faith. Faith, go, 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 go. Please, go. There's a bunch of people downstairs who are still upright. Go help them out. All right. Cut to. <laughs> um, how much do we fast forward here? Yeah. Cut to um, Poltergeist. You're in the pit, standing across from a man named Jack Hammer. There's a crowd of people. Uh, make a make a perception check just to get a look at the crowd. Great. I'm sitting off to the side with a cigarette hanging from my mouth, <laughs> reading a book, not even watching the book. <laughs> yeah, essentially, there's like a gate that. Like explodes. slides up, it's like a cage match, and then the gate slides up, and it goes directly into the medical 
like your medical facility is just sort of adjacent but underneath usually, the stands. Usually the, the med tech would want to watch the fight. Oh, yeah. So there's a, there's a clear view of the fight, but I'm not even watching it. Yeah, yeah, you're totally here. You're in one of the eight corners of the <laughs> octagon. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Um, explodes for a 25. Uh, 25, wow. Uh, 27. Uh, 27 is, nice. is outstanding. With that, you don't only recognize the type of people that are here. You actually see Manji, the the prison mm -hmm. um, administrator that that got you out, is standing. Uh, she's holding a little slip in her hand, and um, and sort of kind of cheering. Um, there's with with a twenty seven. You can see um, there's a blackboard in the back of the room, and. Uh, Let's see, would you be going by the name Poltergeist or do you think you would have a fight name? Oh man. <laughs> you know what? I think she goes by Ghost. Okay. You see um you see a blackboard on the back of the room and um and you see your name Ghost and then um aside to, uh to the side of that you see jackhammer and there's like odds and from what you can tell the betting is favored heavily in favor of jack um because he definitely fits the bill he's kind of he's a classic heel he's kind of an asshole but he like pumps up the crowd like before the fight um the bell rings and uh you turn uh, he turns around uh, with a smirk on his face and comes at you quickly. Um, we don't need to roll another whole one-on-one -on -one combat, um, but <clears throat> you uh, handily, he, the fight isn't long enough, is probably the, the, yeah, you, he takes a couple of swings, you, uh, you break his nose and then uh, put him in some sort of a, chokehold on the ground and he goes unconscious um and that's the end of the fight <laughs> the crowd gets really excited for a second and then they're like oh and they all realize they lost all of everyone with jack hammer slips throws them on the ground you see manji uh looks pretty with uh, this is the 27 that you rolled we won't roll all the fight but the perception is giving you a lay of you didn't even have to pay attention to the fight let's be honest um <laughs> Uh, Manji is collecting just stacks of money because she had seen you fight in the prison. Um, Jack is wheeled off into the medical bay and um, and you follow uh, in. There's really nowhere else to go. So you exit through and uh, uh, Lauren, I assume you follow in. Um, there's a couple of lackeys that sort of drag this big oaf uh, unconscious body into the med bay. Yeah, so I don't <coughs> get up immediately. I wait to finish the page that I'm reading, <laughs> and then I close the book and, <sighs> and get up, <laughs> and and I grunt as I get up, yeah. and I go to uh, uh, to 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 stabilize them and stuff. Yeah, um, as you as you guys exit, they like are scrambling for some sort of an undercard fight as more entertainment because this fight was supposed to last another like few rounds um and uh and Rhonda like kind of looks the look is impressed but also a little bit perturbed that like listen sweetie we're gonna have to talk about making these last just a little bit longer I mean you want me to kill him no <laughs> <laughs> Just maybe let him throw a punch, for crying out loud. Uh, and then Roach scrambles in, like as the gate's shutting, he like squirms around and sneaks underneath the, the gate. And he's just like, you are gonna be a star. <laughs> the amount these sick fucks are gonna pay to have their ass kicked by her? We are in the money. Why didn't you tell me, Rhonda, you could get someone out of prison like this? Well, I got my connections. I just mumble all over my... I said I heard rumors. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I said, I said, I heard rumors. I say, I say. 
The Yosemite Sam Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Oh, no, it's not Leghorn. Leghorn. Foghorn Leghorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. I was trying to mash up with Hugh Jackman. I know, I know. Yeah. I know. Um, uh, so, uh, Ghost, everyone treating you okay so far? Yeah, I mean, you're probably scared of me now. Well, the betting is going to look a lot different, um, but I think whatever we lose in bets, we'll make up. With these uh with these brain dances um keep up the great work you two um i gotta take care of front of house i will say if you're making so much money off of me don't you think it's kind of fair that i get some of the money too i'll work something out okay yeah drinks on the house tonight great i'll take it my usual well, they're not in the house. Well, fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, with that, we need to go to break. <laughs> How long? Have we, it's been so good to be back. Uh, yeah, so great yeah. playing with you all. Stick around. We will be right back after this short break. Like, comment, subscribe. To click. Hello. I apologize for this short interruption, but I wanted to offer on behalf of myself and everybody involved in making this show a heartfelt thank you. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching Cyberpunk Edge of Extinction. We hope you're enjoying watching the game as much as we enjoy playing it. Now, if you are enjoying the show, uh, I just want you to know that there's a whole lot more Cyberpunk Edge of Extinction. So click that subscribe button so you can come back next week and not miss any of the action. One more thing, if you have a friend or a gaming group or anybody at all that you think would enjoy this content, Go ahead and share it with them. That way we can continue to grow the community and share this game with as many people as possible. But most importantly, just tune in next week for more of Cyberpunk Edge of Extinction. Once again, thank you. Our program is made possible in part by Green Tower Games, a friendly local game shop in North Los Angeles County. Visit greentowergames.com. And by subscribers like you, Thank you. And welcome back to Infinite Sided Dice, where we are telling stories and the dice are deciding our fate. Uh, we join some of the party back at Dreamland. Uh, we sit in Shitwreck's office uh, one day after the meeting with Gene, um, trying to get uh, trying to get it sorted. Uh, in attendance is is the two of you, and who else is there? Blades. <laughs> Um, w one of the other, maybe a piranha that's usually a security down at the bottom. We've got mm -hmm. uh, in the room with us. Um, and then my mom, maybe in the waiting room, probably nursing a hangover, <laughs> laying on a couch. Yeah. Let's see. And we fa we fast forwarded a little bit. A day. A, a day. It's the okay. next day. I'm wondering though, if we could have spent that day doing a little digging. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What do you I think? mean, we have no information to dig. Well, how about? What do you want to know, and and we'll see what the role is. How about starting with who? Who do we know that was at Akari that might have an inkling of what is in your dad's head? Well, I would know what like department he worked on in, right? Like I would have had that sort of general knowledge of like, <clears throat> oh yeah, he works in this area of the corporation. Um, okay. So the the piranha in attendance is a uh, sort of stronger, more quiet type. Uh, he goes by the name of Knuckles. Knuckles. Okay. Yeah, Knuckles. <laughs> Love it. Love Knuckles. Um, so uh, I feel like I would have gotten as much information about what my dad was doing when the kind of corporation fell and he went okay. and got arrested, I would have done my own digging. Mm -hmm. So can I roll to see how much I know of what he was working on and a part of? Yeah, absolutely. What role do you want to use for that? I would like to go to my intelligence and I would like to roll for... Well, there really is a business role. <laughs> um, what would make more? S I've got. 
You can, wh whatever you want to use is fine. It'll just be different information depending on what you go with. Uh. So you could use a business role if you wanted to. It's just, you'll find out more about the, the business versus whatever else you might be looking for. Could I use a library search to see how much I was able to like get through documents? How much document information sure. I'm gonna get? Yeah, let's do it. Ooh, that is um, 23. 23, very good. Um, so in spite of the fact that that's a very good role, um, your dad seems to be have been a part of a department that there wasn't much written about. Um, I mean, you go to the easy places first, you ask mom, like, what did mm. dad even do? Uh, and she kind of, oh, he didn't really talk about work. Um, so you go a little further and you start looking through um, like uh, products produced by Akari. And then there's a, a lot of um, like news articles that date back three years ago to the, when Akari went down. And um, there was a lot of um, sort of what's left of um, the U.S. government being with Militech sort of behind them, um, publicizing their connection to Arasaka. And it's a little hard to sift through, like, what is propaganda and what isn't. Um, there's stuff linking them to everything from bioweapons to um, uh, radical, like... Um, uh, even even like really radical like eugenic stuff that uh, seems like really far fetched, and you're like uh, I I know Akari and that doesn't really see that doesn't really ring true. So there's a lot of noise sort of uh, being generated, and you and what I'll give you with that is that um, you're able to sort of tell that Militech did a pretty big snow job on on any information related to Akari at, and their connection. Like they basically like uh, did their best to link them to Arasaka in order to like burn it all out. But they also, this seems really clear to you that um, Militech was interested in obfuscating uh, what was actually going on there. And so they, and as such, it's a little hard to sort of sift through that noise, um, um, which also might be part of why this, this, uh, it leads you to the conclusion, like, this is why this op needs to talk directly with, uh, with, um, Gerald, who is... Gene? G no, uh... Eugene. Eugene, yeah, your, your father. Yeah. And... Sorry. <clears throat> and what do we know about what, I mean, if... If she can, if she can barely get in to see her dad, what do we know about? What can we do for this guy? Um, you know, as far as getting him in to see her, him to see her dad. Sounds like we need. He's asking us to bust him out. Yeah. Um, Knuckles, um, pipes up. Doesn't exactly pipe up. He just sort of mumbles a little something <clears throat> that is indistinguishable. I'm sorry. Um, what was that, Nichols? Um, well, uh, I know it's not really my place, but, um, you know, if you need someone out of prison, there are ways. Uh, you, you could talk to Rhonda. I haven't, I know that her fighters all come from, usually she gets fighters from, from prison. That's where she recruits. Interesting. That's very interesting. That might be a conversation worth having. Thanks, Knuckles. Rhonda, 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 the, uh, the, the, wait, the knockout lady? Yeah, Rhonda Lee at knockouts. That's where uh, all, all those fighters, you think they fight just f for fun? They, no, they're all busted out of prison. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, okay. Can you? Yeah, I looked into it because, you know, um, I thought about kind of, I'm into like mixed, mixed martial, mixed martial art. Uh-huh, of course. Yeah, I thought maybe I could be a knockout guy. But the, the contracts, it's all, you know, I don't know. It was like, it was, 
Then, <laughs> sorry. Well, I think that you would absolutely be a great contender over there. But I mean, we love having you here. But yeah, because I got jujitsu. I do these holds. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's great. No, I saw you do one of those last week. It was really cool. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Thanks, boss. I'm repeating that. That's, that's an interesting thing. To know. Um, here's what I'm thinking. We still don't trust Gene. Knuckles that's, leans in. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, it's fine that we don't trust Gene. Um, but he has brought something to our attention that is quite interesting. And I think whether or not we, I like look at the card and I'm like, does it look like it has like any bugging on it, like that he might be able to uh, make a electronics tech check, a tech. It probably you don't have skill in it, so it's probably just oh a basic God. tech. Do you do you have a bug scanner in your cyberware? Ooh. I almost I almost got one. I did I not. Have, so I have basic. I have okay. <clears throat> what is my? Do I think I it might be bug? fair if you have a cyber suite. I do have a bug detector. There, there it is. You go. I'm so smart. <laughs> 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 really cool I thought you it. might. I thought, I thought I might She's got gadgets it. and gizmos <laughs> aplenty. Oh. Mm-hmm. I'm Little Mermaid, Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a bug detector. So it would have ah, gone off okay. when you gave it to me, I guess. Uh, yeah, you you think to scan it. Um, uh, good thought. And uh, no, there's no... doesn't appear to be any... Whether or not we decide to deliver my father to Jean is another story, but it kind of sounds like we should get him out of Militech's possession and figure out what he was doing. How does your... Can your dad fight? Uh. I mean, it just sounds to me like I'm going to have to convince someone that he might be... Worth taking on at knockouts, or we just convince Rhonda to do it because we ask nice. Okay, okay, I like your way better. <laughs> I mean, pay her, bribe her, beat her up. I don't care how. Oh, favors, is your, favors. Is your dad cut though? Like, is he lift? <laughs> I mean, because I could train him up. It, but he's in prison. He, I mean, he, well, if he's in prison, maybe he's working out. It, that is. Such a good point, and he might be. What else is there to do? Is he there? pretty old though? Cause like you're pretty. I mean, your mom's pretty old. Oh, um, she's. I mean, everyone works out. It's not age. I mean, it's based. not like sure if knuckles. I mean, knockouts is the place. Knuckles is my name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is. No. <laughs> not really sure if knockouts is looking to like get a sixty-year-old dude. In there, I mean, could just, be a spectacle. Uh, well, okay. So what I know is, uh, the reason I got like introduced is because there. Uh, sometimes we move. Oh, uh, I'm not okay, boss. Knuckles. I'm gonna tell you some things. Oh. Uh, we move some contraband around sometimes. I don't know if you know, like. <gasps> no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's shocking, I know. <laughs> We're really super down low Very about it. Healthy. And it's only because we don't want to, like, connect you to any, but... Um, Appreciate that. But there's a lot of money in brain dances, and, like, I don't know, it's kind of weird because some dudes just, like, get in beat up. But I'm pretty sure no one's going to want to pretend to be a 60-year-old ex-corpo. But maybe they want to beat him up. That's pretty cool. It would be. It would be. I would mean, you want to beat your dad up? Kind of. Well, this is pretty good. But we have a whole past so mm-hmm, i see uh it sounds like wanda's is the move though either yeah. way sounds like we're taking a trip to knockouts all right cool let me get my stuff who's coming to knockouts <laughs> he puts on a t-shirt that's a jackhammer <laughs> <laughs> he, he puts on his jackhammer shirt um. jackhammer merch just says get jacked <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. Very good. Well Thank you. Do we want to go? Do we want to go <laughs> get Jack? Do we want to go uh, discreet, just two of us? Do we want to bring a couple of 
Do you want to bring a couple of muscle? People? I mean, I, he's clearly a fan. Yeah, I mean, we can do knuckles. Maybe can introduce us. You know, you know Rhonda. You know her. Oh uh, no! You could point her out if you saw her. Oh yeah, okay, definitely. Great. That's that's perfect. Yeah, for sure. Oh fuck! I would. Yeah, let's go. All right, I'm down. All right. Uh. What are you thinking? I'm trying to decide. Yeah, Blades, can you take my mom home? <sighs> Fine. Thank you. Wait, wait, hold on. It's, is Taffy nearby? Um, she's she, out in the. She's you were, on the couch. You had her like hanging out in a different. Is she? Place. Is she? Is she awake? Uh, yeah, yeah, is definitely. She, Taffy, what are the chances that you remember? You remember your husband bringing someone home from work. What? Someone he worked with closely. Oh, honey, we had a relationship that was not quite like that. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, um, no, we had, we would that's entertain. <laughs> <We'd>, uh, <laughs> but that was, that's awesome. Outside of canon. Uh, no, <laughs> no, we would, uh, we would entertain guests occasionally. We'd have, um, uh, you know, the, the doctor himself would come by. Uh, that's right. We, uh, you know, he was very, he was an important Man, I I don't like to think about it too much because, you know, it's very painful. Yeah. You, you know, I sold my coat. Yeah, we know. I know. I, we, that. that oh, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. But but uh, no one in particular comes to mind that he ever mentioned that he might have been working closely with. I don't know. They all just look like, they all just look like two thousand Eddie suits. To yeah, me. you're you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> I gotcha. Okay, that was worth a shot. Thanks, mom. Where's that sweet boy phase? He's not working you, today. I think no more phase for you today. Yeah, yeah. he went. <laughs> <laughs> Roll. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So Blades will escort your mom home if that's what you uh, request. Um, <clears throat> in uh, is there, is there is there anything else I could work on that's a little, little more stimulating? This is Blades asking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? Hey, Mom, you don't want to go uh, watch a bunch of people beat each other up, do you? That doesn't really sound like my kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I don't know. I've been expanding my horizons lately, and I'm very proud of you for that. Why don't, why don't you come with us? So when does Faye's work again? Mm. You know, I think he's on vacation. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, let's go see people beat each other up. That sounds fun. <laughs> Great. Blades <laughs> is watching my mother at knockouts more stimulating than taking her home. I guess. Great. So we're all happy. <laughs> it's always good when you bring all the NPCs. <laughs> Just roll it, roll it deep with NPCs. Just hop into the. We're riding that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the uh, cyber Honda Odyssey. Yeah. <laughs> oh jump God. into the Honda, the, the, the cyber, cyber XL Chrysler you Pacifica. You just brought liabilities along with it. It's like, okay, hey, good job. That's a great choice. It's just a another bar. It's fine. Um, I. <laughs> so funny, Taffy. Um. Okay, yeah, you stay together. <laughs> I was not expecting to do all these voices at knockouts. I mean, they, they can just be back there. Yeah, they we can don't be, have to talk to them. <laughs> yeah, we can have They're them. their own unit, Knuckles and Blades and my mom. Yeah, they can yes. totally, they actually, can, they should probably all hang back. While yeah. Just chat um, with your own net. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll just slip away for our chat. Yeah, uh, you roll up to knockouts and... Uh, and I'm like, this is my new band. <laughs> <laughs> it's just called bleak. It's just bleak now. <laughs> Designer. It's just bleak now. Very bleak. Uh, yeah. Zingers today. Uh, what is going on? Yeah. yeah. As you walk in uh, the front door, it's like a, it's a it's a big crowd. Uh, kind of. It seems like it's popping pretty much every night. You hear over the loudspeaker, "Who's ready to get jacked?" <laughs> oh, 
awesome. Uh, and there's uh, the uh, jackhammer. It just happens to be a night where he's fighting, and Knuckles is, uh, oh, hell yeah. Um, and Taffy's, like, asking, um, oh, yeah, she goes, Nautica, sweetie, can, can I have some money to... It seems like the people they uh, if I could put some the the fight might be more interesting if we just put a little down on it. Sure, <laughs> I'll I'll hand her a twenty. <laughs> like, I don't know. Then go on place, Tabby. Like enough to put a bit bet down, but not enough to buy drugs with. Just getting, just getting, her, just getting her beak wet with uh, gambling. Yeah, I love it. Uh, yeah, she goes. She goes and finds her way over to the uh, to the blackboard where like people if, are taking bets. Yeah, like if blades, yeah. More yeah, time. yeah. They, she sees Knuckles do that and gets the idea from, <laughs> okay. from him. So uh, and blades tails close behind. Uh, blades is is Taffy's shadow for all intents and purposes. Great. Um, cool. Uh, but Knuckles does point out to you uh, uh, Rhonda Lee. Um, you see her with her trademark cigar sticking out the side of her mouth and her tight, uh, cropped, curly hair. Um, she's sort of looking on. She has a, a booth that she sits at, and there's um, a, sort of a, a, a muscle-looking guy kind of standing next to the booth, and she's just watching uh, fight's just kind of getting started. Jack Hammer's circling the ring, kind of doing his pump up thing. Um, and uh, yeah, there's no other fighter in the ring yet, though. Okay. And does she look approachable? Like she's not like. There's no. Uh, there's uh, no velvet rope per se. Uh, you do get the impression like people give, keep a little bit of a distance, um, and it might be because of said muscular fella. Okay. Um, do you want to just walk up to her? Let's just walk up to her. You t- I'll let you take the lead. Yeah. All right. Or should you take the lead since you are the face? I'll be. You know I'll be the face. Let's be the face. <laughs> I think you need to be the face. So, like, literally, I'm just like, you know, I, I scan for fans real quick. Mm-hmm. Just Not see with if anyone. Them. No, no, I know what you're talking about. No, you're talking about. <laughs> On my way. Don't worry. Just, Ricky's got this. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, are, what are you uh, trying to achieve with fans? I think we could go for the Rocker Boy roll ability here. We could. Um, uh, I'm on, on my way to approaching Rhonda. I want to see if Ron, if I can get Rhonda to notice oh. people noticing me. Yeah, let's go ahead and roll that okay. a- ability. And we'll see how many fans are in the audience. Awesome, awesome. It does seem like you're kind of crowd. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> nothing Absolutely. else you can get blades. They to. might be playing, you know, they Come might be playing down, similar Ricky. music, especially entrance music for some of the fighters. Actually, yeah, I, I'm like, <laughs> we don't, we don't have any way to like, communicate. How far away are blades and them? Um, you can communicate with them or find them and talk to them. Okay. If you want to. Well, I'll just them. with you, be like, you always have. Blades do some like. Well, I have blades, right? And yeah. I also <laughs> have. So I. Yeah. So I could try. I can attempt for an impact on a small group of fans. Yeah, yeah. That's or, that's D- essentially. D- DB10. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How does that roll? I just roll. I just I roll D10. Mm-hmm. And add your rollability. And, so and your rank, which is rank. six now. Six. Okay, so we're all rank six now, everybody. <clears throat> that. Three years have been treating you well. It's exciting. Let's see. <laughs> It'd be pretty hard to fail on this. But. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Oh, I just got it. <laughs> just got it. <Okay>. Ten. <laughs> All right. Um, excellent. Yeah, you scan and you actually, you, um, uh, you recognize um, a group of people that, that you know, but part of the reason you recognize with just a ten is because uh, one of them got your autograph. <laughs> The other night. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, kind of a tension. Uh, but um, let's do. Uh, give me human perception. Okay. On this group. This isn't exactly how the rollability works, but we'll, we're making this thing oh, happen. Oh no, it's yeah. Uh, 
I like it. Okay, it's plus 11. All right, 17. Amazing. So you can see this guy is, uh, he's more sober than he was the other night. And he, you just like catch the eye contact and he's like, uh, with, with that role, you can kind of see he looks a little like almost crestfallen, like, oh fuck, that's, uh, I was, I was kind of an asshole and, mm -hmm. and that's Ricky and he's Ricky Wars and I kind of look like a dick in front of him and, and he's just kind of like, oh geez. Oh, he can't yeah. realize. <laughs> um, and I, I, I see him, I see him and, uh, I just, I just passed by and I'm like, doing all right? Yeah, it's a hell of a right you got there. It's all right. Listen, listen, we all have our off nights, right? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry, bro. I'm, I just want to say, actually, I didn't get to say, I'm a huge fan. Dude. Yeah, we're all, we were at the show the other night. The fuck, you so killing. Yeah, you had a good time? Yeah. Yeah, anything you need. You want drinks, man? Listen, I, I want drinks, but you know who really wants something? Hmm. Wait, no. You know who really wants some drinks? Is, uh, you see that lady over there? Trying to figure out... <laughs> and then I point out Taffy. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I was like, I want you guys to take great care of her. The cougar? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Listen, and, and, uh, look at me, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. They look. Think of your mom, yeah? How would you look out for your mom? Okay. All that's right. All. That's all. Get her some rose or something. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Good to see you, boys. Yeah. But you make enough of an impression uh, uh, it, within the eye line of uh, Rhonda Lee. Okay. Um, okay. You, you get the impression that she probably did see that, that interaction. And, and sure enough, uh, those guys <laughs> go over to talk to Daphne. <laughs> Ricky, like, look Ricky, at these sweet boys. What if they hate their moms? Everyone they here is so moms? nice. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, they don't hate me. That's the whole point. <laughs> Figure out who she puts money on. Uh, oh, oh, she puts the money on somebody. Uh, <clears throat> Rhonda, is it? Why am I looking at her? Rhonda, is it? <laughs> Yeah, it's Rhonda. So yeah, it's you're not Rhonda. Um, uh, shit wreck, you fall in line or? or yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I like hood up, just kind of like hang some pockets, like. Just being cool. Right. <laughs> being just being cool and not noticeable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As you approach and you start to be like Rhonda, is it uh, muscles kind of um, stands up? Yeah. Can I help you? Rhonda's muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yes, I'm Rhonda's muscle. <laughs> You're Rhonda. My oh, name, hi. my name, Olek. Hello, Rhonda. Hello, Rhonda's muscle, Olek. Uh, I was wondering if I could have a, a conversation with you. This is a great place you have here. Uh, we got persuasion. That's that's something you're good at. All right, yeah, and conversation. Or yeah, but actually, let's, whichever let's, role you want to make. Let's actually start with. Well, yeah, it's persuasion. I'm not lying or anything. Yeah. Just, no. As he says that, I'd like to like take the hood off and kind of like make myself visible and be like business to business from one club owner to another. Oh yeah, make a business role. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> little, little B two B action. Get the assist. I love small businesses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Seventeen. Oh, yeah, we'll see if she gives you the plus one. Yeah. Where did it go? I can't find my business. Because 17 is. is the DV here, and you need to beat it. Okay. So we're oh, looking okay. for this. It wasn't a great roll. I three. rolled a 15. Uh, 15. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll give you the plus one with yes. the assist. Um, business to business. Business to business. Go team. <laughs> club to club. Uh, yeah, Oleg. Like, it's okay, I recognize him. Ricky Wars, what brings you to my humble establishment? Ah, well. And business lady. <clears throat> Have a seat. You can call me shit wrecked. Shit wrecked, what, your mom not like you? Something like that. <laughs> Fair play. Technically shit wrecked is sometimes my boss. 
Okay. <coughs> Boss lady. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when I play at her venue and everything. I thought you guys would enjoy meeting each other. But mainly, I think, uh... We... Have a... Uh... A, a bit of information we're looking for that I hear that you're kind of really good at getting. Uh, so what's the ask? Yeah. Well, we've heard that you have a special skill when it comes to retrieving people who are often unattainable. Okay, you're not just a boss, but you're very vague. <laughs> rubbed off on me recently. <laughs> this, is, this is true. I can find people? I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe it's possible. Or what? I don't know what you heard or who from, but... You got some connections in the clink. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do you only do that for your fighters, or can you be persuaded to go into business to get someone we need? Hmm. Um... Trying to think of your your reputation is pretty good, uh, pretty high at this point. Um, so I think she would know what you are capable of, and possibly what you are capable of, and who you are. So you said venue, uh, someplace I know. Wait, sorry. Yeah, uh, venue. Your your establishment. Oh my. You said you were a businesswoman. Yes. Uh, yeah, we 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 run a, we run the Dreamland. Dreamland. That's a nice place. Yeah. The uh, the old owner was kind of a dickhead. He was very mm-hmm. much a dickhead. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, now he's kind of a no head. Mm. Hole through the head kind of guy. Yeah, tough business to be in. I have to say the uh, the, the 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 place has been elevated ever since he's been. Good to know. Shuffled off. Maybe I'll stop by for a drink sometime. Absolutely. We'd absolutely love to have you. So, um, you looking to just pass a message? You looking to get somebody sprung? <clears throat> Getting someone sprung would be the best case scenario. Uh, you hear three dings of a bell, and, uh, you look down into the fighting pit, um, and see uh, the fight begin, and Jack Hammer is facing off against um, uh, someone calling himself the Maniac, uh, who's kind of got like a bunch of tattoos all over the place and like wild, crazy hair, and he like howls like a monkey and kind of jumps up on the edge of the cage and then like jumps back down. Um, It's interesting because you're like, you guys have seen fighting, like a lot of like actual fighting, you're like, these guys look like they can fight, but there's also like a lot of theater going on <laughs> before they start fighting. <laughs> totally. Um, they do eventually get down to where they're beating each other up, but um, but you're like, that's, that's kind of, uh, that's obnoxious a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, she's like, hold on. And, and she's kind of like, you, she's now splitting her attention a little bit, okay. but but she seems like the kind of person who's always aware of everything going on mm. uh, in the room. Yeah. Um, so you're looking to get somebody sprung or what? Well, she said sprung would be the best case scenario. It can be done. Yeah. Um, I think, let's watch the fight and then we'll have a drink. That's a great idea. Absolutely. Yeah. I just glance over. How's how's Taffy doing? Um, Taffy is now uh, 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 chatting with um, a big with a sort of leather faced biker dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but she's actually uh, he's he's next to her, and you can see he's trying to chat with her. But she all of a sudden like gets really into the fight. Yeah. Um, 
and her and her and knuckles, her and knuckles are now like just going crazy. They just they start yell. They start a chant on one half of the, the of the audience. Jack hammer, Jack. No, they're saying get Jack, get Jack. Yeah. Jack. <laughs> she starts yeah. a wave. Yeah. <laughs> and blades, like you see, her eyes actually just disappear. They've rolled so hard. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, oh, I'm gonna need to let Blades do something cool after this. Yeah, yeah. you really do have to. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. So yeah. Uh, the, the fight goes how the fight. Let's let's roll. I'm gonna roll two d ten. We'll call Green the Maniac and Pink Jackhammer. We'll mm-hmm. see who wins. Oh, the Maniac destroys Jackhammer. Oh, he imploded wow. so oh. bad. Oh, Jack, that's like two in a row. It's two in a row for Jack. Guys Sorry, like, Knuckles. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, and then uh, you see Knuckles like tears this thing oh, up, no. and and Taffy has kind of a questioning look, like, "What does this mean?" Did, <laughs> did we win? <laughs> you see that guy who's not getting up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought the other one was Jack Hammer. <laughs> His, his hair was all jacked up. So. <laughs> 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 Cut to. Oh um, you're sitting in a in a well furnished office that has the vibe of um, oh more like a smoking lounge almost. Um, the the room smells like cigars, um, synthetic tobacco and and burning. Um, it's sort of. Uh, it's sort of open underneath. You can see um, off in the corner, you see a gurney with Jack laying on it, who'd been knocked unconscious, mm. uh, and a uh, grizzled looking person. Hugh sort Jackman of, type, <laughs> would you say? Yeah, a, a grizzled, yeah, Hugh Jackman type uh, fixing him. Um, and uh, yeah, there's like all kinds of business going on. And. Um, She's like, okay, so you need someone out of prison. Is this somebody important to you? Uh, I mean, someone important to my mother. Okay, family, I can uh, appreciate that. Uh, It's not easy. Uh, but I just might have a favor I need to interest you. I'm somewhat familiar with, um, at least what Mr. Wars over here is capable of. And God knows I'd love to have him working for me one way or another. (laughs) Um, and you seem smart enough to be quite successful without me knowing much about you. Thank you. Which uh, leads me to believe, <clears throat> which leads me to believe you're doing things right. This is a big enough ask that that I, I, I think a favor is warranted. Absolutely. Okay, well, um, I get the impression that you two might need some muscle though. And I don't send my muscle out without some insurance that they'll be kept alive. They're valuable, you know. It's fair. Okay. But isn't that kind of up to them? (laughs) Up to the muscle themselves? Oh, sure. Okay. Um, Lauren, ghost. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm smoking over the top of Maniac. Ash uh, uh, falling off. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, Jack. actually over the top of of, uh, of, of Jack. It's Hammer. Jack. <laughs> but but as but but I, I look over at Maniac. Maniac. And I'm like, I told you, man. Just stay clear of his port. We gotta access. Uh, fuck water. I walk out and I'm <laughs> reading. Christ. I'm reading one of Lauren's books. <laughs> <laughs> Do I recognize immediately? Uh, yeah. Walking up to the table, you see uh, an an old familiar face. Oh, fuck. Oh, is is this some kind of joke? What's going on here? You two know each other? Yeah, mm. we know each other. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good fucking family reunion. Sign me up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm like, oh, 
I've missed the ray of sunshine that you bring into every room you walk into. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh my God, how did you end up here? Oh, our little ghost? Yeah. Um, she's the product of my get out of work release program I run here at the uh, at Knockouts. She's quite a valuable asset. You'd be amazed how much some businessmen and sometimes businesswomen types will pay to experience the thrill of being beaten to death by a Someone such as Poltergeist, as Ghost. Um, Shut up. You're fighting here? Yeah. <sighs> Why else would I be here? I mean, there's lots of reasons. But. Anyway, Ghost. That this tracks. Isn't, this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was born for it, honestly. I um, mean, yeah. But I, I think, Ghost, you expressed wanting to get a little extra payment um, for your work. <sighs> yeah. Uh, maybe we can negotiate an early settlement of your contract if you're willing to uh, do some extracurricular work. I'd send one of these other knuckleheads, but honestly, you're the best fighter I've got. Yeah, they're also all fucking idiots. Yeah, I'll go. And I think if I let you fight Tiny next week, he might not survive. So uh, it's a win-win. Um, Lauren, you up for a little field work? Oh, Dick, what do you got? <laughs> It's money. It's money. How much are we talking? Well, first of all, you're going to need to become familiar with a man named Gio Campara. <laughs> Pause for everyone to now write. Now we're taking on. notes. <laughs> I actually lost my pen, so I'm going to I love gaming. <laughs> Uh, make, Ooh, um, I can do homework for <laughs> uh, Streetwise or other, um, uh, um, yeah, I'm wondering, or other if, intelligence check. I'm wondering if I've heard that name before. Sure. Street, I'm going with Streetwise. Uh, 19. A 19, that's excellent. Yeah. Um, this Geo runs a gambling establishment that's a little higher end, and by a little I mean a lot higher end than knockouts. Um, in fact, he's kind of a, uh, he's a dude that, um, if you run gambling in this part of Night City, Geo gets a piece of it. Um, okay. Yeah, in fact, he probably shows up at the fights. You actually might even already know this because Gio would be like a VIP and when he shows up, he sits in a booth that's next to the ring, um, drops a shitload of money, but it never matters because it's all his money getting paid back to him anyway. Yeah. Um, but he likes to, you know, high roll in front of people to impress them. Um, lots of uh, lots of girls hanging around. Uh, it's always a production when Gio shows up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Geo has been a pain in my ass since my ass was whatever. I don't have anything clever to say about Geo. He's a pain in the ass, uh, but he's kind of my boss. Um, but just looking to take him down a peg. Um, and I, if I know your music correctly, it might this might jive with. Uh, your own personal code of ethics. I know that your types tend to like to have a little moral center to the uh, crunchy monetary exterior. Sure. Um, he's got a hold of something. Now, I don't know what. He's got a hold of something. He's keeping it in a vault at his casino uptown. And you want to know what it is? I want to know. I want to, I want to own it. I want to have what it is. Now I think, I would think it was just a large sum of money, but it seems to be something more than that because, well, rumor has it, there's some corporate interest brewing. A lot of that going on, going around. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I think, you know, Militech's got a kind of a raging, uh, excuse my language, a raging hard-on for this, uh, whatever this is. Um, 
he's keeping it as some sort of uh, uh, he he calls it um, collateral on some debts that some uh, high rolling corpos uh, have run up in his establishment. Here's the thing. Let me lay it all out for you. Sure. Shall I stop being? We all have fun being cryptic, but yeah, please. Kind of reached my okay. limit on cryptic, so let's lay it all out there. Corpo high rollers, they tend to like to throw money around. Sometimes they get in some pretty serious debt. And sometimes it's a debt they can't cover. Now, somebody stupid gave Geo something important to cover a debt. And that same stupid person didn't learn their lesson and got even further down the debt. So here's what I think. Uh, rumor has it, it's a Militech executive, done something stupid, gave him something stupid. Militech knows this and they're willing to pay Geo for it. However, if that thing should go banished, Geo's going to be in a fuck lot of trouble with uh, some very important people. And that frees up a little bit of business, <clears throat> a little bit of cash for you. Because it's because you don't have to vote uh, anything to Geo anymore. I'm glad I don't have to lay it all out for okay, you. Okay, gotcha. Does this sound like something the four of you might be able to manage? Mm -hmm. Sounds like something I'd absolutely love to fuck up. Yeah, yeah, you had me at Militech. Do you want this Geo guy dead? It's not off the table. But it can't get connected back here. So it's best if they don't see, at the very least, my little ghost becoming quite popular, so. Well, the, what's the kind of security like? How much, how much repairs am I gonna have to do on this team I'm going with? If you can call it that. So we got sunshine and palm trees. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I like that. You don't even that. know what any of that stuff looks like, Ricky. Me neither. <laughs> I like that. Oh, <laughs> palm trees, to answer your question. Um, I'm not going to do your fucking job for you, but uh, you can run a little... He, he's got his casino uptown. That's where the vault is. He runs games. Uh, I imagine you start by uh, answering your own questions. I'm out. I don't think anyone was expecting you to be the brains of this operation. <laughs> oh? I'm in. I mean, what? We can get you a gig there. We can do a little undercover. I like it. Sometimes she likes to be my manager. I like that, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love being your manager. Um, I'm in. Sure. Uh, gear, overhead. I'm assuming we have to cover that ourselves. I mean, but if Lauren's out, what's the point? I don't want to be carrying these two around. Well, we haven't talked numbers yet. Now, the two of you, you owe me a favor. We owe you a favor, yes. We're out uh, looking for a favor. This is a pretty big fish, and I want it fried. And I want it fried right. Um, so, in addition to paying you. I'll stop calling you palm trees. <laughs> Look at that. All right, day, day rate plus 200%. Back in. <sighs> and uh, you, we'll just keep working on that debt. Sure, sounds fun. And so, and us, we're talking about an even trade. Favor for a favor? Favor for a favor. All right. I'm even providing you some muscle. I okay. appreciate it. And I uh, just bring that, whatever's in that vault, you bring it back to me. Bada bing, bada boom. We get your, uh... <clears throat> who are we getting out again? Uh, my dad. Ooh, um, we get pops out of the clink. No. If you get your dad out of prison, I'm gonna kill him. I don't really care if you do that, but I'm getting him out for someone else. 
I got an idea. Who I'd also love for you to kill, so. <laughs> I got an idea. Now stick with me on this one. <sighs> we get her dad out, put him in the ring, you know, do the brain <laughs> thing. She beats the fuck out of him. She gets happy. She gets happy. You get happy. And all the brain people get happy watching being able to beat some fuckhead up. That's a corpo, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we did originally discuss that as an option. Yes, but uh, um, it, it, it just so you know, we're not doing it out of the, the uh, uh, you know, the kindness of our heart. Our Honestly, deep, it deep sounds like it. Ghost over here knows what we need from my father anyway, so why don't we just cut the crap and you tell us why you would kill him? Because your dad is corpo shit. Well, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of those. Your dad is a Kari. What are you talking about? So you don't know. Why would I need to know? Wait, what's your beef with a Kari? Yeah, what's her beef with anyone? She's angry. She's mad. Ooh, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, because you're so interesting, princess. How's your palace across town? <laughs> it's great. Whatever. I mean, I'll do it. I don't care. It's anything that shortens the debt, so. Well, I mean, like we said, this isn't, this is not an act of altruism. This is something else completely. So, uh... If you don't mind my, I mean, it's not of my business. It's not a deal breaker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you don't mind my asking, why, why springing an Akari? He's not a nobody, he must not be. Less him and more whatever the fuck he knows that we're trying to get. Someone's, yeah, people are nosing about and we're trying to get ahead of it. Information. Yes. It'll get you rich, it'll get you dead. Mm hmm. Sometimes, you know, this is why I shouldn't have even asked. I'd rather not know. Yeah. It's okay. We didn't. We literally can't even tell you. We more. can't even tell you. <laughs> because we don't know. We don't either. Wonderful. Well. Um, well, who wants to take a road trip and uh, do a little stakeout? I yeah. call backseat. <laughs> do, do, <laughs> do you know where the vault is? Uh, okay, well, we're dark tomorrow, and... Um, we can go without medical staff for a few days, um, and you don't have to fight till next week, so you guys take your time, enjoy yourselves, do the job right, we all get rich. Yes. All right. Um, where does the party head? Should we powwow back at the dreamland? Mm-hmm, yeah. back in the office. Back at the land. Okay. I, uh, Back I grab, I grab a, land, happiest place on I grab a couple of books, throw them in my bag. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's really insufferable, like Hemingway and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's it's actually like like depressing shit. It's like, um, you know what? It's like Bukowski. It's, it's, <laughs> no, no, it's just poetry from Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, oh. I was going to say it's Sylvia just, wow. Plath. It's just like Sylvia Plath. Oh my god, uh, <laughs> I love it. Ed Gallon, Poe, Plath, and Bukowski. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That's all he's got on his show. Uh, okay, you grab your bag of books, you grab your med pack, your, your uh, med tech gear. Um, I think, uh, um, Poltergeist, you've been able to uh, gear up as well um, in the time since you've been out. You had, uh, we could only assume, caches of equipment. <coughs> stored from the early days sure still so um whatever it is you need you have just um, these two <laughs> yeah. honestly i consider it just being like yeah you just fight with your you don't need anything um yeah okay so you're back at the dl um having a conversation mm -hmm. um i guess it's time uh i guess it's time for planning yeah so, how do we want to approach this? Do we want to go in there first, get the lay of the land? We, we, we don't even know where this fault is. Did, 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 
It's in the casino. Yeah. Uh, I will see if I can dig up any blueprints and mm-hmm. I'll sure. use my <laughs> contacts. Yeah. Is the mom still with us? Is Taffy still? Oh, what shit. happened to the? There's oh, shit. three other characters. <laughs> <laughs> She's with blades. I'm not. Oh no! Uh, I think Taffy makes her way home. And yes. Get some well-deserved rest. Yeah. After a hard day. Hard day. <laughs> Listen, I want to clear things up first because maybe we can get information we need even easier with the help of someone who's really good at hacking into things and understanding someone who's been in the world of secretive information and all the things corpos are hiding. Are you looking at me? Uh, that's where my eyes are pointed, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think I'm some kind of net runner? What are you talking about? No, I about? think that you are very well versed in corpo secrets and finding them out from your previous employment. No, I mean, that's my grandpa's game, was my grandpa's game. I just made the people gone. You did never pick up information along the way. Why would I need to? Like she said, information gets you dead. That's fair. So what we're trying to do is not get all of us dead, first of all. Yeah, Uh, oh shit. (laughs) There's a I don't even want to call him a guy. That guy was weird. He calls himself Gene. He came to us. He said he's from across the sea. And that my dad has information that Melatech is trying to use. And if they find it out, apparently it's a big bad. But he wasn't very forthcoming on who the hell he was. So mine said, why not just kill my dad? But that didn't seem to appease him much. So see, I'm on very much the same page of killing my father. I don't give a shit. Um, but apparently he's holding very important information that neither side should have. Have I fucked with these people? Do I know? Have I? Um, wh- what do you mean? Like, Like, do I know? Do I recognize <clears throat> the name Jean? Do I know kind of what she's talking? I mean, I think I obviously would know what like across the sea means, you know, yeah. what kind of corporation we're dealing yes. with. I think without rolling, you know what across the ocean it means. You, The name Gene doesn't mean anything to you. Listen, I don't know anything about this Gene person. Um, I know that everything across the ocean is bad. Does that help you? Am I the brains of this operation? Oh, Jesus. oh my god, yeah, you did it. Congrats. No. Oh, please, I don't know what you want from me. Please don't talk like that anymore, <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is your job. I'm just hired to be the muscle. You just point me in a direction or I'll shoot. Great. I just wanted to get the second half of our mission out in the open. You seemed really hostile about the whole thing, so I wanted to talk it through because you apparently needed time to understand. I don't think I'm hostile. You're right, you're a fluffy teddy bear. Well, she's got a debt to pay off. She's got skin in this game. I think that's good enough for us. Yeah, Yeah. and I think it's important for her to understand that we're trying to fuck over a corporation bigger than anyone we've had a chance before. I got it. I'm already on board. I don't know why you're trying so hard to convince me. Who wants to hear my new song? Anybody? No? No. Oh, hey, boss. Uh, It's me, FaZe. I got the... uh, Your friends need drinks or anything? And Oh, shit. It's you. It's you. Person, Faze, you remember Faze. me? Faze. Yeah, yes. we met. We met in this very office. Mm-hmm. We did. That's true, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Right on. Hard to forget, Faze. Anyway, you know what? I no, no, this time is good. Libations, libations. Uh, what? What makes you happy? I think the blood of small children. <laughs> Do we have any of that? Fresh <laughs> out of kid blood. Um, here, he he pours uh, a round of of the of decent stuff. Mm-hmm. He's like, but I just, I did want to give you, um, he slides a couple small pills over to you. You should give your mom at least one of these or 
She's gonna have the worst fucking headache. God damn it, okay, what are they? Uh, yeah, you recognize, um, it's, uh, it's a, uh, synthetic cocaine, uh, but, but very small doses. I, I'm just I saying, say anything, though. I just, she was I riding pretty that. hard. Maybe she deserves the very bad headache. <sighs> but I take that's, it that's between you. Uh, but uh, I just want to look out. I mean, Taffy's really sweet, and I, I didn't mean for things to go. Mm. Hey, she can be very convincing. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, cool. You guys good then? Drinks? Anything uh, FaZe can do for you? I think we're good. Thank this you, This is FaZe. FaZe's new thing. He, <laughs> FaZe talks about himself in the third person. <laughs> now. That's Thanks me, so FaZe. It's, Thank you, FaZe. It's, it's a FaZe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just know when I came down off of that, I was rolling pretty hard and it, whew, mm. um, just looking out for you. All right, cool. Uh, good. Yeah, well, yeah, we're good. Thanks, FaZe. Yeah, so uh, before the, uh, the moron pusher came and interrupted, you were talking about maybe some new music. <laughs> I mean, is it anything like Bloody Room, Bloody Hotel Room, or Murder Machine? Because uh, if it is, then I'm down. Get the fuck out of here. Palm Trees is a fan. Well, I mean, it's what I'm listening to right now. What? <laughs> Stop it. Well, I'll tell you what. Bleed Let's out, talk. Bleed Out, Scream Out's my favorite track, to be honest. <laughs> All right. Uh, you see? You see? <laughs> You so, see, this is how this is how you smooth shit out. You just <laughs> play some great stuff. Against, bring everybody in. Perhaps against Shitwreck's <laughs> wishes, there is a guitar hanging on the wall <laughs> in their <laughs> office <laughs> for just such an occasion. I um, keep taking it down, but Ricky keeps sneaking in and putting it back. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's uh, new holes. <laughs> <laughs> So as you pull pull the guitar off the wall, do you have a new song for everybody? Um, All right, let's let let's see. I'm gonna call this one. I was like, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I was still working on the title, but in 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 light of present company, I'm gonna call it Ghost Trees. <laughs> Ghost Trees. As uh, as Ricky starts to uh, strum the first few chords of the n- the newly uh, named song, uh, I think that's where we're gonna end tonight's session right. of uh, Cyberpunk: Edge of Extinction. It's so good to be back. Yeah, oh my God, it feels so great. It was really fun. Uh, I was desperate to play uh, more of this campaign with you guys, and I'm so glad that we've been able to do it. Um, Again, and a lot of that is thanks to uh, y'all for supporting. Absolutely. Um, special thanks to our patrons on Patreon. Um, it's really humbling that um, that there's anybody out there that it loves what we do enough to support us in that way. Uh, but also, if you can't do that, it's also really humbling just to see... Um, uh, see the, all the comments, comments and all the outreach. Great, keep that, that going. Yeah, keep please. That going. Yeah, it, it, it really keeps us going. It's it it's it's hard. This is a hard thing to do. The game is fun, and it's all done out of love. But um, but producing all this is not easy, and um, and that the the support we get from you guys has been um, really great in keeping us going and making this happen. Um, so. All right, uh, it's great to be back here for season two, and there's a lot more to come, so make sure if you're not already, I don't know why you wouldn't be, uh, make sure you're subscribed, and uh, and we'll see you at the next episode of Cyberpunk Edge of Extinction. Absolutely. <laughs>